Hi, this is CBRadioMagazine.com, and we're going to review another meter. Uh, this is uh, another one in our series that we've been uh, looking at. We've gone through quite a few now, and there haven't been too many new radios on the market. Uh, so we're going to stick to reviewing some of the products that are out there that are popular with CBers and even a lot of ham radio operators. This in particular is the Palstar PM2000A Watt Meter. Palstar previously made a popular meter that was called the WM150M, and it used a very similar box. Uh, it was a little bit different with the layout. They had the meter here and the buttons on either side. The previous meter had a, a peak and average option. The watt range on the previous meter was uh, 300 watts and 3 kilowatts. Uh, on this meter, it's a 300 watt scale and a 2000 watt scale. Um, the power button's in the same place. The one new thing that they have added to this is they've added a peak hold option. And you'll see here that it has a, a peak hold so that it'll show your, your peak uh, for a couple of seconds. So this meter uh, shows your forward and reflected power on the two scales. It also will show your SWR where the two cross. Uh, it has an analog display here. It is a powered meter. And not only does the power control the light, but the power also powers a circuit board. Um, this particular meter has what's called uh, active peak reading. So it should give you a very uh, accurate reading of your single sideband peak operation, which is what most people are looking for. So uh, the meter itself, on off button here, your power range. So if you're operating at uh, 300 watts or below, you would leave it out on the button, 2000 watts uh, in. Peak average button here and peak hold button here. This is your average power, peak power, and if you want to have the needle hold, that's what the peak hold does. Um, one thing that I don't like about the meter right away compared to the other one is it doesn't tell you um, on the buttons when they're in or out which one's which. Uh, I mean, we can assume that, you know, when it's in the out position on off, so on would be in, so we can assume that 2000 watt scale would be in, peak reading in, peak hold in. So I mean it's fairly uh, user friendly to be able to figure it out, but still I would have liked to have seen the actual little graphic next to it where it shows, you know, if the button's out then it's 300 watt, and if it's in it's 2000 watt. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, as you can see this meter is for 1.8 to 60 megahertz, so this is an HF type meter um, and it's popular with also ham radio guys as well as the CB crowd. It's got a very durable case to it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll flip around and show you the back. All right, at the back of the meter, you see it has a ground uh, screw here. It's got an input. That's where you plug in for your radio. Output coming out of here. Made in the USA. It's got a serial number on it. it also has your 12-volt uh, DC in plug here. This comes with the radio, and it's just a wire. So it's a plug with two wires, negative and positive, coming out of it and you need your own power supply. So if you actually want to read your active peak reading, you need to have your own 12 volt power supply source. A um, little disappointed it didn't come with a wall wart, just plug directly in the AC, you do need your own 12 volt DC source. Uh, if you're going to use it in the mobile, you know, obviously you can just wire into your vehicle's electrical system. All right, let's show the meter in action. We'll power it on. You'll see the illumination comes on. We'll leave it in the 300 watt range. We've got it in average mode. We don't have the peak hold on. We're uh, in AM mode. We're going to key up and uh, put uh, just about 20 watts into the meter. And we're running through a low pass filter and into a dummy load. So you see uh, the meter showing right about 18, 19 watts, which should be uh, basically exactly correct for what we're doing right now. And you'll see over here the SWR is going to be very low, of course, uh, basically barely not. Uh, even hitting anything over here since we are running into uh, a dummy load. So that's how uh, initially if you were going to read just a dead key on that. Um, as you can see if you were doing uh, small adjustments uh, for one watt or so to read on your radios or if you're trying to adjust them for going into amplifiers um, 
you know, it, this would be great for de dealing with your amplifier output, but if you're trying to see what the output of the radio is, you're going to be guessing in that 0 to 5, 0 to 10 range because it's not uh, a large meter with, you know, small increments on it. So uh, let's switch over to sideband and we will uh, key up in sideband and uh, show you what this looks like uh, when we modulate. We've turned it into peak mode now, so it should be reading our peak modulation. Audio. And you can see we're hitting uh, just about, this is uh, 100 and then it goes 125, 150, uh, 175, 200. So we're at about 110 watts, which is uh, absolutely correct for what we're doing uh, for our peak wattage. Now you see that hold option, that puts a couple second delay on it. And uh, we'll show you this again here. Audio. And you can see it hold at the uh, high point there as I'm talking here. And you'll see it'll hold the peak output and then it'll drop afterwards. So I'll unkey here. <clears throat> so it will hold it for a couple seconds, show you what your peak numbers were. And uh, after that, then it drops back down to zero. So now I will show you one thing um, before we get done here. What we have uh, in front of us is the old uh, standard Radio Shack meter. I'm sure a lot of you have seen them and a lot of you use them. And uh, they have different power ranges and readings and everything as well. They We've gone through them in another video. but. Uh, basically, we have it set to the 200 watt range. We're in uh, our power mode and we're in our peak average meeting. Now, this is not a powered meter, so it would not be called an active peak reading meter. Uh, audio, and you'll see, it doesn't have a peak hold on it, but you'll see the peak output is showing right about uh, in between, just, you know, it's, it's, it goes 100, uh, where that 1000 shows there on the 200 watt scale, that's 100 watts, and then 2000 is 200 watts. And if you're looking at that and you're going in between, so in between would be 150, and right in between that would be 125, and just below would be about 110. Uh, audio. So this meter is showing just a little bit over 110 watts or so. Fairly accurate, and it's not an active peak reading meter. Um, I'll show you one more meter, and we'll do the same thing. Okay, so this is a dozy. And we've got it set to the peak reading option. We're on the 200 watt scale. Once again, it's not going to have a hold on it, so I'll have to show you. But uh, audio. And I don't know if you guys saw that, but this number 10 is on the 200 watt scale. It's going to be 100 watts. And these increments here are going to be 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. And at the peak, we're hitting about 110, 115 watts. So, um, in terms of peak reading uh, on single sideband, uh, this meter is showing about 115 watts. The Radio Shack showing uh, 110, 120, somewhere in that range. It's a little difficult to tell on the small meter. And our active peak reading meter, the Palstar, is showing about 110 watts. So after the little demonstration, I'm not taking away anything from the Palstar. Um, the Palstar is showing very accurate readings on the wattmeter scale. The uh, SWR, uh, SWR meter works correctly. It was showing uh, the correct increments uh, on our SWR readings, as well as I unhooked the, I always do this with every meter I'm testing, I unhook the antenna just to make sure that it jumps off the scale. Um, I did have a Palstar a couple years ago, a WM150M, one of their early versions, and I unhooked the uh, antenna by accident at one point and keyed it, and the uh, SWR meter didn't jump. Um, and I sent it back to them, there was a problem, and they recalibrated it and sent it back to me and everything. But uh, with this particular model, it, everything's working correctly. Uh, I did unhook it, and it jumped up over here into the 7 range and everything. So, uh, you know, it is a good meter. It shows the correct readings. I would say it's fairly accurate for what it does, and as an active peak meet reading meter, should be fairly close on. But um, the negatives are the scales are fairly small, so you're not getting a whole lot of increments in between, which makes it a little bit difficult, especially in some of the lower power levels. Also, cross meters, I'm not a big fan of the cross meters, and it, it's very difficult to read what your actual SWR is, even in this, uh, you know, two... Uh, 1.5 range in there 
And I mean, obviously it's just to give you an idea. If you're up above two, you probably have something wrong anyway. But uh, I still like to get a little bit uh, more accurate reading on a, a smaller scale um, that'll show it a little bit better in the increments. And I do find the cross needles are a little bit hard to read. This meter comes in um, about $159, I believe. I just bought this, uh, doled out the money just so I could test this out for you guys. My point for doing the other meters was everyone really touts these for the active peak reading um, options. And, you know, I'm sure with those running uh, high power amplifiers, ham radio operators, uh, that, you know, this type of meter is, is what you're looking for. Very well made, you know. Uh, can handle the power, those types of things. But, uh, you know, that SWR meter from Radio Shack was showing pretty close on the readings on that scale. You know, on some of the other readings sometimes, you know, I have found them to be slightly off. And on the Dozy, it actually was pretty accurate as well. M my point being that if you are a CBer and you're looking to spend money on a meter, the Palstar is a good choice. It'll work great for you. There are other options, though, that you can pick up those Radio Shack SWR meters used for, you know, under $50. The Dozy is going to be around $125. Uh, it has a much larger meter on it. Now, it's not a true active peak reading meter, as these ones are considered, or that uh, MFJ828 we reviewed recently. Um, but, you know, one of those things you have to consider when you go to a higher-priced meter what are you getting? And I think with this one, you're definitely getting a very accurate meter. Uh, it seems fairly accurate in its uh, readings, as far as we can tell. You're getting the peak hold option. The action on the meter is very nice. It's very smooth. The peak works uh, well for the hold. And uh, obviously, it's a very well-made meter. It's very durable. The case is very strong. It doesn't feel flimsy. You know, a lot of meters, you can push on them. You'll feel give. There's no push or give on these. So, so let's pop the covers. I'll show you the inside of it, and uh, we'll finish up the review that way. All right, this is the inside of the Palstar PM 2000A, and you can see there's a circuit board here on the back of the meter. Circuit board on the bottom, there's actually adjustment points in there so you can calibrate it yourself if you have the correct equipment to do so. Uh, they do include information in the manual about how to do that. You have your input oh, it's coming in through over here and your output over here. And I will point out, uh, in terms of the construction, a lot of meters, you know, you'll see them coming in, you'll see the wire coming in and soldered to something else. It's a little hard to show here, but it's quite interesting the way these come in. The pin comes straight through the circuit board and is soldered directly onto the circuit board. Oops, sorry about the camera work there, folks. There we go. And uh, so there isn't any type of wire. It's going directly into the circuit board. And same thing on the uh, output side there. If I can get this to focus, you'll see it comes straight into the circuit board. So very neat engineering that way. Um, the way these are engineered is very neat, very clean on the inside. Not a lot of uh, wires uh, crammed in or anything strange going on. So made in the USA, something I like to see as well. This is the Palstar PM2000A.